Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is regularly scheduled meeting of Sunderland Board of Selectmen. It's May 21, 2018. I'd like to call to order at 641. The David Pierce Precision Time piece needs uh, adjusting, Dave. Yeah, it needs a battery. Yeah. I think we wouldn't even be here yet by now. <laughs> no, um, we'd all be at work. <clears throat> yeah. So, list. <laughs> if FCAT could um, zoom in on the wall, uh, that one. The Sunderland Women's Club is holding a raffle, and and if you look over on our TV as it pans to. Uh, screen left uh, that is the quilt that's going to be raffled off tickets um it's the proceeds um are going to the the raffle benefit the south uh, sunderland women's club and the and the three scholarships awarded by the sunderland women's club to the graduating high school seniors and those those um Scholarships are both are all three of them are worth five hundred dollars. Nice. So, um, if you take a minute, you can uh, we'll we'll zoom in over at the uh, um, the quilt that was made. Um, I feel like I should get up and do a Vanna White kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. Do a Vanna White thing, baby. <laughs> but it. Um, it uh, has a logo from the 300th, which is the, the uh, sycamore tree with uh, 1718 to 2018, and the uh, celebrating three centuries of community. So you can buy tickets down in the main office area. Yep. If you want to come in the main office, uh, there's one ticket for $5, three tickets for $10, the drawing is going to be held on June 16th, 2018 at Sunderland's uh, 300 celebration uh, party. So if you have an opportunity, please come in, buy some tickets. Um, it's going to a worth, very worthwhile. And the quilt is, is I'm sure it's more gorgeous in person than probably what you see on TV. The lighting, right. Um, also, the 300 is you notice the uh, banner they erected a banner last Monday um, and it proclaiming the uh, weekend of July of June 15th through the 17th as our celebration um, part of the celebration big parade on that Saturday fireworks Saturday night we got bands we got food trucks uh, we got stuff going on uh, Fire department's doing some stuff on Sunday. The school is putting on a, a, a play down at the uh, Friday night. So there's a lot of stuff going on. So I would uh, check check your, we have the local Sunderland newspaper. The newsletter will be out by the end of the week. The We're newsletter is going out and it's dedicated to a lot of the stuff that's going on. Everything's <clears> 300. For the, so it's gonna be centered on the 300. So the newsletter will be going out um, shortly and hopefully we will have a schedule up on FCAT on the community calendar also with us with the dates and the different things that are happening <clears throat> so first thing up we have the approval of the May 14th meetings may I have a motion please motion I'll second we have a motion made and seconded any discussion here no discussion all those in favor please signify by saying aye. aye aye next up is we have old business board of selectmen updates David and Scott I actually don't have any updates this week. It's been a quiet extracurricular week. This week. It's a good thing. If, if I could, Mr. Chair. Okay. Uh, 120 North Main Street Working Group met uh, last week with the architects and developers downstairs. Uh, this was a progress update. And the uh, submission to the ZBA, which effectively referred to as the big binder, was sent to the ZBA. As most people know, this is the town is hoping for after the purchase of the 120 property hoping for through the RFI process RF uh, Q process uh, to get a friendly 40b it looks like we have that working partnership with RDI and then the ministering by the Franklin uh, Regional Housing Authority our housing um, committee met last week uh, 
talked about the current progress. The progress had to do with the submittal to the Conservation Commission, wetlands delineation finalization, and then finally the ZBA big binder. Uh, we heard after last week's meeting that we were on, and I want to get my date right, I think the 6th or maybe the 7th for the next ZBA meeting. Hmm. So p interested parties uh, want to both take a look at the town's website or call our office. Uh, the ZBA meeting for 120 North Main uh, will be the first week of June. That's going to be an important meeting presentation for the developer, and it's the first pass with the Zoning Board of Appeals. Is it reason it's in front of the Zoning Board of Appeals is to do with the function of uh, density in that lot, and that's really, really important to bear in mind. Conservation Commission, as well, has a subsequent meeting looking at the wetlands delineation, and the wetlands delineation has to do revisit, has to do with the fact that there was a delineation that was presented for the project and a subsequent delineation that was requested by the developer. And because in a conservation as well as zoning actually, you can't have two determinations on the same project. So we're looking to run, the uh, developer is looking to extend, and this is an important piece for um, uh, folks who are interested, extend the zoning board component because the zoning uh, zoning board as well as the conservation commission get a second look at that application mm. that's really really important especially on the conservation side secondly if i could mr chair the frontier capital planning committee is meeting next week and that we're planning to develop our recommend we're planning to finalize our recommendations for our the Frontier Regional School Committee, and it has to do with the capital plan. Remember that the capital plan <coughs> originally presented was kind of a, and I, I give, I'm gonna sigh, one, one deep <laughs> breath. There was a laundry list of combination of what constituted deferred maintenance <coughs> and what could be construed as capital for the Frontier Regional High School. The working group that was appointed to comprised of members of the select boards, <coughs> delegates from municipal uh, participants, and school committee members, all worked on <coughs> what original value was, you know, multi-million dollar borrowing authorization. I think after pulling the onion apart, looking through all the layers, there's some consensus that we will be borrowing at some point a value mm -hmm. that may not be that original value and that the implementation of a medium and long-term capital plan for Frontier Regional would do the municipalities much more good. The facility in itself isn't in, in terrible shape by any stretch of the imagination. However, <clears throat> there is a question and some tension about, well, what constitutes monies worth borrowing, projects worth borrowing monies for, and planning and major maintenance and annual maintenance. Right. And, and so in a maintenance there's, plan. Right. Yep. And, and again, it's it's not to it, it's not in any way <coughs> to take uh, the existing uh, organization and question their veracity. On the contrary, right. it's a matter of what goes well with going to town meeting. Right, what goes well with a borrowing authorization. And I would be remiss if I didn't, I didn't use a simple example. In the original application, because Frontier has run its debt out and there's no debt assessment to the city, to the, municipals, the municipalities in, in, the, in, the, uh, in the district, the reality is, do you want to borrow for whatever period of time for something that can be <coughs> done in a single year? And the debt burden is such that it's been a very lively discussion. Long story short, and I thank you for the time. We're heading for a rec. <laughs> well, we're headed for a rec. It's wonky. I get it. We're headed for it's wonky. We're headed for a recommendation. And I have to say, as one of the members of from the municipal side, that <coughs> when you look at a piece that um, simply is a debt authorization because that's easy, doesn't make the problem any better. 
Right. So we had this year, all four towns voted for uh, using a warrant article mechanism for a piece of rolling equipment. Yep. We've done that in the past. That's not debt. Right. Our ability to pay has to be looked at in multiple tiers. Can you pay in real time for real maintenance? Can you pay in short time for what could be considered major maintenance? And then can you pay in real time debt for what would be construed as capital? And those definitions have been just like pulling teeth. Mm -hmm. So anyway, that's where we're at. We're back at it again this upcoming week, and we hope to have a vote on recommendations. I would say that the members of uh, Conway, Sunderland, Waitley, and uh, and to a lesser extent, Deerfield have been, and I don't mean to disparage Deerfield, to, to a lesser extent, Deerfield have been really, really thoughtful about how to understand the opportunity and present it best to the rate payers. Yeah, I'm done. Thanks. We want to have a meeting about three weeks with finance committee members to talk about mm -hmm. that debt piece. Okay. So the, the punchline is we started at $3.1 million that the school was simply coming and asking us for, district was coming and asking us for, and it looks like now we're in about the one-ish million dollar range, but with an effective capital plan backing it up annually thereafter. Right. Because all the stuff is on the list to be done. It's a matter of how you allocate yeah. it. Yeah, and you know, you know what I struggle with, David, and if I could, Mr. Chair, the, the hard and fast reality is everybody can look at a capital list and go, well, why are you doing that? We're all experts on painting and stairs and HVAC and building yeah. envelopes until you roll it all up and go, well, who, how do you pay for that? How does that work? Is this prevailing wage? Is it a capital project? Is this a borrowing worth? You know, you know what is it? So you might spend $5,000 on three sets of uh, stairwells that need to be uh, retreaded. Retreaded, yeah. And that's okay. Yep. The question is, do you want to borrow for 20 years to do that? Probably not. Yeah. It doesn't have the same life cycle. So yeah, exactly. I, I use, with some measure of a pride, um, the definitions that Sunderland helped develop with John McCainian and everybody else to say, Right. This is what Try this and, Department uh, of Revenue looks at for projects worth borrowing for. What constitutes major maintenance? Actually, the definition comes from the uh, Ohio State University program, which is very, yeah. very good. Okay. And then, anyway. Infrastructure is not glamorous. No. You know, no. It's, it's, but you got to slog through it and exactly we got to do right. it. Yeah. And, and the only thing I'd like to add to that, though, Scott, yeah. is that... Um, Way too much talking with that. The, the uh, Division of Capital Assets Management, yep. DCAM. Yep. That's that's what they do. Yep. And and I would and, and about how how to manage those how to manage those assets. Yep. And 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 it really we shouldn't be starting over from scratch. Oh, and, absolutely and I, not. I, I, I would say is that no more than the library and the mm -hmm. town started of uh, maybe four or five years ago. They're bringing like we knew in the library that that its pumps were probably going that pump that's used for heat were reaching its life expectancy. Correct. And you need to put them on a rotating yep. basis for replacement. Great point. And and so things and and <clears throat> it and it's easy. You're right. It's easy to sit back and and to 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 bat five hundred or greater. By when you're sitting back and think, watching things occur, but and I, I think part of what we should be doing with the schools as well as town buildings, I think we're doing now with town buildings is is trying to plan a little bit better, and we're always going to be caught with a thing that we don't know. Right. But there's more to running a school than um, staff books and paper. Yeah, the, the, and the brick and mortar is individual just, <coughs> operating annual budget. Yeah, you're absolutely right. The brick and mortar yep. of a building is just as important. And 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 you and and you think about it. I mean, you know, just a couple of years ago, we had a an, a Warren article to pave the road, Swamp, yep. Swamp, Swampfield, Swampfield yep. Drive. Yep. And you could and you could say, well, is that is that? And I think what you were saying is, is that a Warren article or is that? We should, it's plan me. You know when you put down that asphalt, it's going to be 20 years, you can probably have to replace mm -hmm. it or whatever the, the time frame is. 
So I, I, I think, and I, I think the next big hurdle for us as a town and a region to address is the brick and mortar stuff that we haven't. Good point. You know, we've been more, more focused on, on staff. Right. Good point. But I think we're learning there's much more to running a business than right. the staff. Yeah, that's been very interesting with the cross section of the group. If I could, Mr. Chair, you know, there is a, a, a professional engineer retired. There are finance people. There are people in the trades. There are people who are associated with the building. And those individual <coughs> perspectives looking at uh, a group think around a problem or around um, a structure, not a problem, around a structure mm -hmm. has been really, really uh, healthy. That's been very, very good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Okay. Anything else, Scotty? No, that's all. Thank, Thank you, you, Scott. David, you're all set? Yep. Uh, South County EMS had a meeting last Thursday night. Uh, at that meeting, we went to, uh, we had held a meeting in the South Deerfield Fire District meeting training area. Thank you, uh, uh, South Deerfield Fire District, for allowing us to meet there. We then, um, after our meeting, we then proceeded to go over to the, the new home of South County EMS. It was turned over to the town of Deerfield. <clears throat> well, I guess technically the Deerfield Academy abandoned the building to the town of Deerfield. So we, we uh, the town of Deerfield, um, the electricity is now in its name, the propane is now in its name. The insurance, um, and I think it's kind of um, amazing, um, but we were told that the uh, building is now insured for a million dollars. Um, and <clears throat> we hear that it cost in in excess of uh, seven hundred fifty thousand, eight hundred thousand dollars to build the building. Um, there's a lot of conversation about how much it would cost beforehand. Sure. Um, and I th I think it's more in line with what we kind of thought it was going to cost, but eight hundred. Let's just say eight hundred thousand dollars. I don't have the exact numbers, mm -hmm. um, but but inside it it's uh, it 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 appears that's going to serve the uh, South County EMS well. There's there's training areas. There's um, um, office space. The the Bay Area for the uh, for the trucks is very nice. The uh, going to eventually have a, a emergency generator. It's got a kitchen set up. So it looks looks to be very well done. Nice. Garage doors openers that actually work. So it looks good. Um, I, I think uh, we, South County, um, have been very lucky to have a uh, um, entity like Deerfield Academy that's willing to do that mm -hmm. um, and and help move our move our facility forward. So. So this coming Saturday, Sherry, the 26th, there's going to be a, an open house. We can't, we're, we're not moved into South County. We're not moved into the building officially yet. Um, there's things that have to be done. There's, there's paperwork that has to go through the state because we, uh, we have controlled substances that need to be, you know, light, properly licensed. But um, we will... Um, there's going to be a dedication ceremony on Saturday um, at 9 a.m. at the new facility, which is 88 uh, State Street or State Road or whatever. State that, Road, yep. Um, which is, we most people around here would call it Route 5 and 10, but it's right, um, it's right next door to the South Deerfield Fire District. Everybody in town is invited to come over nice. to walk through to see see what it is. It won't be it won't be decked out with everything. Um, we are we are soliciting donations um, of furniture because there's still going to be some needs inside there. So if you come over and, and there you have donations that you know office furniture, uh, seating for the uh, training areas, etc. If you come over look at it and you have something if you own a business. Um, and you want to make a donation, be greatly appreciated. 
So, so that that'll be happening this this coming Saturday. Mr. Mr. Chair, Scott? should we, as a board and a member of SCEMS, uh, ask for a letter of appreciation to the donors of the building? Let me talk to the town of Deerfield. Yeah, understood. <clears throat> let, let me ask the, the representative, yep. and I'll, I'll get back to you guys on that. Deerfield Academy is going to be acknowledged for their donation Saturday at 9 a.m. Mm -hmm. So they will be their board of trustees will be present for the Good. official handover. So, um, but that that I mean each okay. member each member community may want to yeah say something. Yep, yeah. absolutely yeah. makes Good sense. Point, so that's where we stand on that, and that's moving forward. Um, it's difficult. It's difficult to talk about what happened in Texas, down at Santa Fe High School. I I don't know what the mom and dads. And the people are going through down there right now. Um, I don't know how to solve the problems, but <clears throat> I only wish that our elected people would somehow forget about elections would forget about politics um, and 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 try to find a solution that's going to work you know blaming um, one another never is going to solve never have solved any problem it will not solve a problem that Santa Fe high school had uh, two resource officers in there they had they had many times had staged training um so it, it's not like they were as prepared as any as any school probably in the united states could be for something like that and still it still affected them so i i just hope from washington all the way down we can forget about winning an election and and try to solve the problem and to solve the problem is probably going to take compromise on both sides, because um, I don't think anybody has has an answer. And when I talk about compromise, I'm talking about the ability to listen to one another um, and put everything on the table. Don't take anything off the table until it's been fully vetted by by all our, all participating parties. I think in our country. We saw we saw problems when we worked together. I I don't you know I, I talked to the chief I talked to the police chief. Um, I think we do everything that we can do. Um, we we put more money in this past year for at town meeting for for security and and such. I don't I don't think we should lose any any child that's going to school. Correct. So. I, if I could make an impassioned plea, it would be to our elected officials to stop <clears throat> playing to the audience. Sit down and uh, sit down with one another and begin to solve the problems. Sure. And don't and 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 I'll tell you what, and don't don't care if you get reelected. But I think that's a success. To me, the success of a, of a person in the public forum is not caring if you get reelected, because then you're going to do what you're, you're going to try to do what's right every time. Okay. Scotty, if I could, Mr. Chair, I would direct uh, people who are uh, watching or who are interested. After the Parkland shooting, the Boston Globe did a, a, tr a tremendous. piece of work through its spotlight series pointing out with the current gun laws in Massachusetts and I'm not saying they're right wrong or indifferent as a gun owner 
in the state of Massachusetts. I can say that abiding by the laws gives you every opportunity to use whatever <coughs> gun you choose to use in whatever environment. The Globe did a great job saying that if the gun laws in Massachusetts were nationwide, there would be 27,000 fewer students dead from the time they were enacted. I would also point out that in the current year of 2018 that we're in, there are more students killed in school than active duty servicemen serving in hostile areas. So read that article in the Globe and remember that as much as we talk about this in a national format, we, we live in a region that uses some measure of reason and honest respect for each of those sides. Thank you. Thank you, Scotty. So, and, and again, with those words, and, and again, it's hard, it's hard for us to deal, but this, but this has to start from us. And when I say us, I, when, I, when I say us, I mean the residents of this community have to have to have to link arms, and and you have to have our voice heard, just like the the students in Parkland um, made their, their made their voice heard, sure. and and basically people saying enough is enough, and we don't, and you don't have to make it pop political, and and no one's talking about, and and I've had guns since I've been eight years old, and I've shot on a rifle and pistol team, and I. Yep. I'm not talking about taking guns away. I think you can have responsible gun ownership. I think you can have responsible gun laws. And I, I think most people, most people, not everybody, but most people understand that you can have responsible. Yep. And, and, but again, I, I'm just saying, what I'm trying to say is that I, I don't know how those mom and dads can, can put one step in front of another tomorrow today I I would just be totally devastated so and and, and no matter we, we, we think we're doing everything the right way now but as I was showed down in Santa Fe it's not so maybe okay yep all right <coughs> thank you thank you for <coughs> indulging me on that town administrator updates uh, just a couple. We have the peer review back for the North Main Street reconstruction project exactly. uh, that was done by Howard Steen Hudson. Yeah, when is it though? Um, it's back. It's back. It's back. It we came back it this back. afternoon, so I emailed it to you, and I, you have printed copies as well in your binder there. Uh, they're available to come out on June 11th for a public informational meeting to present the options if the board's so inclined. Mm -hmm. I would say along that line, if I could, Mr. Chair, the, the, the pilot, Sherry, the uh, town of Southampton along College Highway just finished a complete streets rework of an area that had some uh, measure of density <coughs> that we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll bring some photos just, oh, just oh, to yeah. see what that combined space, combined path. Now, the setting is different. Mm -hmm. I get it. <coughs> but you can see those elements. You'll, you have 3Ds um, in your... Um... Great report too so okay. it's Thanks. nice to so have okay. those so visuals can, as well I so can, can we schedule that meeting as soon as possible so we keep everything moving forward um june 11th at 6 30 is that you know, let, let, let the residents june 11th know. at 6 30 sounds good okay let the residents know yeah you want me yeah. to put the report up online yeah yeah put, yeah, put, yeah, yeah, put the report up online um if we if we uh should we invite the folks from um I would, I would invite the same people that we didn't last time, so the same invitations, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah, we created an email list of all the people that were here, Great. so. Okay. Let's do that. And then the TIP meeting for the North Main Street project is tomorrow um, at the COG at noon, so I'll be attending that as Good. well. So is that, is, <coughs> if I could, Mr. Chair, is that a progress meeting with respect to TIP and schedule, or is it an update for where the town and its... I guess it's all the it's, just, it's all of Franklin County. Everybody. All of Franklin County. Yeah. 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 Got, got it. Got it. Yep. Wait, I checked today. We're still on schedule for 2020. So. Yeah. Ooh, it's, it's all. Good. It's all Franklin County. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's but that's why we said we need to to do that as soon as possible. And the PVTA budget meeting is on Wednesday. Okay. Great. Be attending that as well. Thank you. All right, correspondence. Uh, yeah, we have a letter here from <coughs> Jordan Zikowski. And the letter is actually to uh, Police Chief Dimitropoulos 
and it has to do with uh, per his discussion requesting leave of absence from position as a police officer at the Sunland PD due to employment with the Greenfield PD. Schedule has slash is slash will be changing in the coming month. The uncertainty of my obligated hours there makes it difficult for me to commit to shifts in Sunderland. It is not my desire to be unreliable or to cause any scheduling difficulties for the department as that is unfair to the administration, my fellow officers, and the people at Sunderland whom we work for. Request a leave of absence. Excuse me. I'm requesting my leave be for 45 days from submission of this letter. Should I require this leave to be extended beyond the required 45 days, I will give in writing notification later than 15 days before the expiration of my leave. Also, I should note that you and this department have been beyond accommodating while my assignment in Greenfield has been ongoing. My limited availability and shift scheduling have been cumbersome to navigate, but this department has been nothing but understanding. I'd like to extend my personal thanks to all involved here. Respectfully submitted, uh, Officer Jordan uh, Zukowski. So, Sherry, what does the contract say about that? <coughs> Paragraph 250 says that employees desiring a leave of absence without pay for personal reasons shall file a request in writing with the Board of Selectmen. Such requests may be granted at the sole discretion of the Board of Selectmen and shall not be subject to grievance. A leave of absence may not be granted for the purpose of taking other employment. Uh, the Board shall inform the employee and the union in writing of their disposition of the request for a leave. If the request is denied, the employee may personally appear before the board at their next regularly scheduled meeting and request reconsideration by them. Uh, David Scott, thoughts? Um, you want to start no, no, good. So my, my first thought, Mr. Chair, is it's quite clear that this is, now we have, it's important to bear in mind, we have full-time officers, part-time officers, there's a lot of shift giving and taking with part-time officers and intermunicipal rela intermunicipal relationships with part-time officers, even with full-time officers who are looking to cover. I completely understand that. I struggle with uh, this request being a 45-day leave of absence in that there's good standing uh, with the town of Sunderland well, it's quite clear in the letter that it is for employment with the town of Greenfield. And again, I hold no grudges against someone needing to do these kinds of things. Right. We have a contract with this stipulation for a reason, and that is, as we have known and have experienced, there is um, a training component, there is an investment that municipalities make, there is a shared relationship with other municipalities, that there could be people who move on through the part-time process. We've had this situation in the past where you go through academy training and people move on. I get it, I completely understand this. But the language of the request coming to the board is pretty clear that this is in regard to employment that can no longer be met the schedule for the town of Sunderland. Now, for perspective, from my perspective, that puts the town of Sunderland and the Sunderland Police Department either having to cover shifts with overtime, leave shifts open, or go back out and find more full-time or more part-time appointments. Right, and the there's a tension inside of there. I, I appreciate uh, Officer Zukowski's recommend, uh, letter to the board for this, I struggle with this simply being a tryout for a full-time position and then he moves on and we're back at it. I also struggle with the fact that we negotiate these things in the contract and it's pretty explicit that it's not for, this is not for the purpose of employment. Right, because I was reading that line. That's so, in there. There's a tension I have in there and I understand completely the amount of work that goes into part-time officers wanting to feel where they can fit in in uh, public safety across. I have a niece who's right now headed to Provincetown. She's going to go to the, for academy work. That said, we're pretty clear in our contract. And you've said in the past, if I could, Mr. Chair, the best part about a contract is we all know the rules. Okay. Thank David, you. your thoughts? Any discussion? Yeah, I mean, I'm inclined to agree with... Uh, 
with Scott on that. And it also kind of leaves us in a bit of a bind for those 45 days and the uncertainty after that point. I, I you know, I get that you'd give us a notification, yep. but it makes it a little tough to to manage I, that. I, I, I would just say that their contract allows that if we deny this, he allows us to come talk to us. And, Correct. And right. I, and I, so I think it. there's a way out. And, and, I, I, and, and again, I think having that, you know, having that um, next step is a worthwhile step. Correct. And, and, if, and if, if, if the chief thinks differently or the officer thinks differently or the union thinks differently, they can come to our next meeting and they Correct. can, they can, uh, they can talk to us how that, you know, they can talk to us and, and we can reconsider at that time. It's important to bear in mind, if we're good, Mr. Chair, that leave of absences have been granted for a variety of reasons. And they can be. Mm -hmm. Right. Absolutely. Okay. <clears throat> um, motion to accept the uh, leave of absence request. So moved. Second. And a motion made and seconded. All those in favor of the request, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, aye. say aye. no. No. Nay. Nay. That's what I meant. <laughs> Sorry. Please record the uh, board selectman is uh, zero three of uh, granting a leave of ex ex leave of absence. Okay, Sherry. Sure. So we voted mm -hmm. no. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. That was on to another topic. My. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Mr. Uh, Clerk, what do you have on your next? I have on here approval for the town administrator's <coughs> contract renewal. Right. Well, yeah. Actually, no. I'm just with respect to correspondence. I'm sorry. We have one correspondence here uh, that is the appointment of Al Richards to registrar, and it's from the chair of the Sunderland Democratic Town Committee, Susan Triello. Dear Miss Hool, the Sunderland Democrats would like to recommend Mr. Al Richards to be registrar. Please contact me if you have any questions. Thank you, Susan Triolo. Okay. So I will do. I will entertain a motion from the board for the appointment of Al Richard as a Democrat Board of Registrar. So moved. Second. A yeah, motion made and seconded to uh, appoint Al Richard as the Board of Registrar's Democrat representative for a term from 3 20, 2019. Right. All 19. those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 We have another one. We also have Donald Patterson, Board of Registrar's Republican Representative, term 3 2020 on the agenda. I accept a motion for uh, Donald Patterson uh, as a Republican Representative. Motion. Second. We have a motion made for <coughs> Donald Patterson, Board of Registrar's Republican Representative, his term to expire on 3 2020. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And we have a third one, Mr. Bertrand. Yes, we do, Mr. Chair. Lastly, we have Edward Kelly, Board of Registrars, Republican Representative. And as you as you uh, pointed out prior, this is a term to 3-20-21. Now, and, and just so I, while this is this is important, um, yeah, this, this the, is, the registrar the registrars are out of cycle with all our other appointments. They this are mandated by the state. Their yep. appointment cycles are mandated by the state. <clears throat> the the town clerk pays very close attention to that, and our town democratic committee and town republican committee um, forward their nominations to the the to the, uh, registrars to the town clerk. So now we have an appointment of Ed Kelly, the board of registrars, Republican representative. His term is to expire at three twenty twenty one. We have a motion made and seconded. All those in favor of Ed Kelly, please signify by saying aye. 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 We shall appoint Ed Kelly once again to a Republican registrar. <laughs> nice. Um, and then finally, we have the uh, approval of town administrator's contract renewal. Scott, you did a uh, negotiation. What can you uh, fill us in on? Well, I could say, Mr. Chair, the bruises have healed. <laughs> Sherry, Sherry is a, a difficult negotiator. I would say that uh, through those negotiations, uh, it's based on uh, Sherry's continued uh, desire to work here uh, for the <coughs> residents of the town of Sunderland and at the discretion of the board. I would also say that uh, she has, and we've agreed to a three-year term. Uh, there was a particular interest focused on continuing education. There was continued, uh, sorry, particular focus on professional associations. 
and then there was uh, salary compensation uh, that's reflected in this year's budget and will be going up over 3% during the course of the contract. And frankly, I would say that this <coughs> negotiation, I've negotiated with a couple of town administrators as of you, as of you, uh, at this point, I would suggest that um, the contract reflects uh, Sherry's um, skill set that the board values and the town clearly values, as well as her desire uh, to continue with the work and the trajectory that uh, she has um, put an imprint on. And we have seen this in multiple town administrators, Tom. You've talked about this in the past, where there's kind of a, a direction, there's a, a bit of a, a bit of a thumbprint or an imprint that a town administrator leaves over yep. their tenure. And in uh, Sherry's uh, uh, short tenure and hopefully longer tenure, uh, has been on a little bit more in the way of uh, strategic goals. And we see that in the grant rounds, we see that in the green communities work, we see that in the community compact, we see that in her uh, breadth of experience being brought to the town. So we couldn't be more fortunate. And I'd recommend that uh, we vote to uh, sign this uh, three-year agreement. David? Uh, I'll second that with extra thanks on top of that. It's greatly appreciate it. Thank you. When, when we when 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 the town started discussing um, a town administrator form of government was yep. back in uh, 1990 91 92 and our town um, had some very meaningful discussions about town administrator versus the way we we were doing Correct. we were doing business. And one of one of the one of the one of the attributes of a town administrator was the ability to go out and get grants to uh, and funding to help our town do some of the things that we may not have been able to do on our own. Um, I wish, and we should, put up a scorecard on the website mm -hmm. and, and maybe I'm going to ask Sherry to do that about <laughs> the, the grants that the town has gotten over the last five years. Sure. Good point. We, mm -hmm. we don't promote our <clears throat> because one of the things that Sherry does very well, she works very hard. Most of her work is offline that most people don't see. Correct. Sherry's not a grandstander. Right. She doesn't have to be out there. Uh, beating the masses about what she's done. That's good and bad. Um, it bad <laughs> I, I, I know. It's, I it's, it. ba it's bad because our some of our residents don't get to see the great things that you do every day. Thank you. Um, we do, because we talk yeah, we to do. you. We see you. We see the grants rolling in. We see the three, you, you know, the the complete streets was a contract for what three hundred and twenty thousand dollars three hundred ninety six thousand dollars three hundred ninety three hundred let's repeat that three hundred and ninety six thousand dollars to do um putting in sidewalks ada improvements road resurfacing resurfacing lighting, traffic yeah and you know extending sidewalks and and we've seen the benefits of extension of sidewalk and, mm -hmm. and Chip Thomas, the time he extended the sidewalk yep. from from just past uh, the Go 10 down to um, Silver Lane, yep. and and actually yep. tied into 116. 116 yep. That quarter there, uh, Chip. That that one thing, you know, was um, was proof positive <clears throat> of how sidewalks can change a community. Yep. Oh, absolutely. And and and, yep. and and I I think and if ever, anybody ever wants to know <coughs> when Chip did that, it really brought um, the importance to sidewalks to a community like Sunderland. Mm -hmm. Because I don't think people the walkability, I don't think really people were talking about that before. And and I think that was the the forefather of the uh, the pathway committee mm -hmm. yep. was doing things like that. So that's three hundred ninety thousand dollars plus to do that. 
that most people in town don't know, that don't know it's even there. Green communities. Look at how we've used green communities. Um, and use them again next phase. That's and, right. and I would and I would right and I would say um, and we've used it. We've used green communities in our our elementary school. We've used it in our town hall. We've used it in our library. We've used it in the fire station, police station, public safety complex. We we we've, we've used those everywhere, and we're about to use them purchasing lights, street light conversion, street lights conversion, and and hopefully we'll hopefully. We'll see how and what it costs and what the savings are, yep. and and maybe we'll be able to finally revisit where where we need to add additional lights. I'm not promising anything yet because we have to find out what it costs, but maybe we'll be able to maybe we'll be able to do that. So so Sherry, um, so I think if you went back, we're probably in town. I'm thinking we're over a million dollars between green communities and stuff. What we've done. Um, in the last five in the last five years, correct. Plus, there's the associated budget savings. You get the money for those, but then each of those things has led to savings on our ongoing operating, operating budget. Yep. And and so, I, I would say, um, each each town administrator, starting with Dana Kenna, uh, Margaret Nardowitz, and now Sherry, have left their own imprint. They all had they all had strengths. They all had weaknesses, like all of us, um, but but it, it's the we've been very fortunate that the town administrators that we have had since we've gone to the town form, the town administrator form of government have all done the job that we needed at that particular time. Good point. Yeah. And and Sunderland now with Margaret, we got to a point where. Um, our, our next step was branching out and, and looking at grants and mm -hmm. at, and Sherry's done that. So Sherry, you have done a wonderful job. I don't, I don't know how else to say that. Um, I wish, you know, <laughs> in the private sector, if you were a CEO of a major corporation, we give you a million dollar bonus right now. <laughs> Unfortunately, we don't have million dollar bonuses to handle out. Hand out and there's but, no grants for that. And there's no grants for uh, <laughs> right. Yeah, we only give you an add a girl. I'm uh, working on project update and an action plan for the next fiscal year, so I'll pull all that together and you can review it, and then we'll put it up online. And I think we should. I I, I think okay. I think people Community if they sat back and I think if I think if they sat back and looked at that mm -hmm. and 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 as David said and and I'll I'll I'll, I'll repeat it, um, it's taken pressure off from our budget. Correct. And and we've actually. You know, by reducing our energy costs, our we money that we would have to, or maybe that we wouldn't spend the money, but we would have shabby infrastructure. Good point. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, Sherry, good job. I would, uh, at this time, I would entertain a motion from the board to uh, um, acknowledge Sherry's work, um, the hard work of Mr. Bergeron. Working on this contract, and uh, I'd entertain a motion to uh, reappoint Sherry for uh, or sign a contract for the next three years. So no. moved. Second. Yeah, motion made and signed, uh, seconded to uh, sign three year contract with our town administrator, Sherry Patch. All those in favor? Now we can all take that away, you know, really quick. Yeah. And decide <laughs> there, there is, there's all kinds of clauses <laughs> we just yeah, talked about that in the contract. Right. So, uh, that All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Sherry, we have a vote of three to zero to uh, affirm your uh, signing of the contract. Thank you. I look forward to it. No, the thanks is ours. Thank you. Three more years of fun. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's almost Anything, time to anything else we need time. to talk about? <laughs> uh, just reminders coming forward, Mr. Chair. Yep. yep. Anything else? Okay. Mm -hmm. No public comment. Uh, FCAT no. comment? <laughs> What, what, I, what I'd like, what I'd like oh, to say. Sorry, oh, that's right. What I what I like to to add is that I would like uh, the board to have ready for June our next meeting, June fourth. Yep. Um, three items that each member would want to uh, prioritize for the coming year. Yep. Okay. Yep. So if we could, <coughs> and and. 
I, I think to settle down, I think a little bit where we should do that. Yep. So agree. Um, if we could put together, and, and I don't, you know, not ten or fifteen or twenty things, but if we just, you know, take some time, think about three things that you'd like to see done yep. over the next year or two, longer range, and uh, put those down, and we can have, uh, you know, that some of the things that Sherry can be working on in the in the in the background That's for right. next yeah. year. Sure. The other thing is, is I'd like to ask Sherry to please schedule at the earliest convenience. A meeting with the uh, um, the appropriate people, so we can start talking about uh, uh, the sale of marijuana in the town of Sunderland. Mm. Um, I I I believe um, from the meetings held that the planning board they're pretty comfortable with their zoning bylaws. I I would say at this point it's 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 imperative that we look at. <coughs> um, there's certain things that we can look at, such as uh, taxation, the the security, the fencing, um, hours of operation. There, there's a whole litany of stuff that we can look at. Pilot agreement. Uh, What's that? Pilot agreements. Is that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, can can Sherry, can you put together a, or a host meeting? agreements? I guess that's what's not. Yeah, that's what they host. qualify it. Yeah, yeah. So, can you put together a meeting of the appropriate people so we can we can start we can start that discussion, and 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 let the town know so that if people in the town okay. want to participate, they they absolutely can come. I I understand some communities have voted to not allow it in their communities. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know if we can. We, we our town was pretty much in favor of. I think it was like 70 30, 70 percent, thirty percent. I don't know if we uh, want to have that discussion. But if somebody wants us to have that discussion, um, to come in and, and let us know about it, we can have. We'll have that discussion. But I think it's important as you, as you say that, Mr. Chair. You know the the electorate the electorate voted in a ballot format, mm -hmm. but the local ordinances need to be responsive to. The outcome of that ballot, absolutely, and that—that's really what we're talking about here. <laughs> yeah, and, and again, I, I, we're not our our job. Our job is not. I, I believe our job is not to to re uh, litigate, Correct. For lack of a better term, yep. the the ballot question. Our ours is trying to ours is trying to look at it and and pro, to you know just like there's laws and rules that governs uh, the sale of alcohol. Mm -hmm. this is, right. The it's, same thing yep, should be. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, come into effect. So, Sherry, if you could put together for our, one of our uh, very, uh, a meeting in the very near future, okay. if you would please. Okay. Um, important dates are coming up. Friday, May twenty fifth, is we have our annual Memorial Day parade. It kicks off at six p.m. here with a short, uh, short um, uh, ceremony at the uh, Veterans Memorial. Um, I know a lot of people haven't attended that, but if they if they want, we do have a ceremony, yeah. a laying yeah. of the wreath at the at the uh, at the um, at the flag of of the wreath. It's a uh, it's a brief ceremony, um, but the benches have been resurfaced. The the uh, mulch has been down. It's weeded. The memorial is looking very fine right now. So. If you if you have an opportunity to come down prior to six o'clock to look at the memorial on that day, and, and it's just a remembrance of what Memorial Day is. Memorial Day is 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 is, is honoring those that have paid the ultimate sacrifice, and we're honoring those those men and women and their families. And it's uh, Sunland does, Sunland has done a very nice job in the past, mm -hmm. um, a very respectful service. The town offices will be closed Monday the 28th, which is Memorial Day observance. Uh, the restoration of the Sunderland Fire Department history, uh, May 29th at 6.30 p.m. at the Sunderland Public Library. So <coughs> if someone would like to uh, uh, learn about the history of the Sunderland Fire Department, come on down to the Sunderland Public Library on May 29th from 6.30 to 7.30. And uh, I think you'd be, it's a worthwhile, it's kind of, and it's kind of nice that it goes with our 300 celebration yeah, as well. Yeah, it goes that and it's a, it's a great piece of history. Our next meeting will be Monday, June 4th, 2018, 6.30. FCAT will be present. 
Um, again, Good job. if if, some, if, if uh, you want to participate in our government, you're always welcome to come to our meetings. Um, we do have public comment, so your your voices are always welcome to be heard. Anything else, Scott, David? Uh, not this time. Nope, I'm good. Time. Right. You got a reading? No, I did not bring it. Although I'm, I'm working, I'm, I will bring it next week. Okay. <coughs> I have voter stats for you to follow up on a Shoot. request you had. So we, our total registered voters are 2,415. At the annual town meeting, we had <coughs> 126 attend. At the election, we had 585. Hmm. Interesting. That voted, so... Still a big gap between registered voters and those who showed up to vote. I will, I will also say that we're getting towards the end yeah. of a school year. Seniors are getting ready to graduate. Yes, I would are. just uh, remind everyone, um, we all want you to go on to your next, next step, either college or military or um, going out in the workforce. So be smart. Um, and make your graduation um, a memorable for not just you, but your mom and dad, brothers and sisters as well. Good point, Mr. Chair. And, and <coughs> their, their formative years spent in higher education in our area, it's amazing the reach that that has. And I give a really simple example. I was, I was traveling and uh, randomly mentioned the word of uh, <coughs> Bub's barbecue uh, and yeah. across the table someone <laughs> went oh my god I love that place <laughs> this was yep. in another continent <laughs> oh really wow. there you go cool. <laughs> had to spend their time at UMass yeah I was gonna say right yep. so um, entertain a motion uh, motion second to adjourn we have a motion made and seconded to adjourn. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 We have an affirmative vote of 3-0 to adjourn this intellectual session. <laughs> please call us out at 738. Uh, that's really common.